Greetings friends! Today we are going to be creating a silly coffee filter creature. We are going to need a lot of different materials, so let's talk about what we're going to need. First, we're going to need some coffee filters. If you don't have coffee filters, you can also use white paper. Just make sure you cut the circle out of the paper so it's still nice and round and make sure you have two. So two coffee filters or two white circles. Once you have that, the next thing you're going to need is markers. Now markers is preferable because with markers you can get the water tie-dye effect happening but if you don't have markers you can also use crayons or colored pencils they just won't make the tie-dye effect. The next thing I'm going to need is going to be an old plate or something I can use to do that tie-dye effect with the water that's okay if it gets dirty. Now once that part is done the next thing we're going to need is scissors, some tape, or some glue. You're also going to need some old junk mail that you can cut up for making the arms and the legs and maybe some found objects from around the house that's okay if you put them into your art. Make sure you ask moms and dads first if it is okay if you use something before you put it in your art. Now make sure you have everything gathered up, all your materials are ready to go and let's get to work creating our crazy coffee filter creatures. Today I'm going to begin by gathering up the materials that I'm going to need for the first part of our activity. I need my coffee filters, my markers, my paper plate, and some water. And I'm going to choose out two colors that are similar. I'm going to make sure I have two coffee filters stacked on top of each other and I'm going to press them flat so that way I can color on them easier. Now as you are coloring, think about what kind of pattern you are going to make. I'm going to make just a simple striped pattern of two different colors. Sometimes it's tricky to color on that coffee filter, so make sure you're using your extra hand to hold it still so it does not move while you are working. Take your time and work carefully and slowly. It is okay if it's not perfect. If some of your lines are a little crooked, it will be okay. Now I'm just filling in those lines for my second color. Now I'm going to make sure I put the cap on my marker and I still have two pieces stacked on top of each other and now they're going to go onto my plate. I am now going to do the tie-dye effect. For the tie-dye effect I want to put just a little bit of water onto the coffee filters. If you do too much water it will make the colors disappear. Take your time and do just a little bit of water. If you do too much, the colors will all disappear. You can use a paintbrush or any kind of tool that you might have. You could use your finger if you want to, but you will get a little messy doing it that way. So make sure you wash your hands when you are done. Once you are done, set it someplace to dry. It will take an hour or two for this to dry. That looks pretty good. I think I'm going to just do a little bit more on the edge. Again, don't do too much. Just a little bit is all it takes. Once your coffee filters are dry, I am going to go ahead and get some tape. If you don't have tape, you can use glue. Any kind of tape or glue should work. I am going to take a piece of tape, or if you have glue, you can do it with glue. And I'm going to kind of curl it and stick it between the two pieces so that way they're stuck together. Once I have taped or attached the two pieces together, I am going to move on to the next step. For the next step, I am going to need a pair of scissors and I am going to fringe the edges of the two pieces to make it look kind of fuzzy like hair. Now, if you do not have scissors, that is okay. This step is optional. If you do not have access to a pair of scissors to be able to fringe the edges, that is okay. It does not have to have this part done to it, but this is just something extra you can do to add a little bit more detail to your artwork. Once you are done fringing all the way around the two coffee filters, see how that makes a nice fuzzy texture? That looks good. I'm moving on to the next step, which are gonna be the arms and the legs. I have cut four strips of junk mail this is just a piece of junk mail that I got that I don't really need, so I cut them into four little strips, and I am now going to zigzag those strips back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Once you have zigzagged the strip of junk mail, you set it to the side and do the other three. So do this for all four pieces of junk mail. Once you are done 
zigzagging your junk mail, I am going to use tape or glue and whichever you have, that's what you get to use and you're going to stick it inside of the two pieces coming out the edge right there. Press it in and you are done. Do the same for the other three pieces, two arms and two legs. Take your time, stick it in there. That looks good. Now let's move on to the legs right there, two pieces sticking out the bottom for the legs. That looks pretty good. Now I'm moving on to the face. Now the face you can do with a marker, a crayon, you can draw it on there. I have chosen to use found objects. I went and I found these tags off of some bread bags and I am going to use those for my eyeballs. Why? Because it's fun and silly, it's creative. And you can use whatever you want to make the face on your silly monster. I found a piece of yellow string and since my bag tags are yellow, I found a yellow string so it kind of matches and I stuck that on there to make the mouth. I'm gonna use a crayon, kind of add some more details. Now, depending on the color you used for the markers, you may or may not be able to see crayon show up since mine is a little bit darker, it's harder to see. Take your time, add some extra details to it. You could use a pen, Sharpie, colored pencils, whatever you have available to decorate your creature. Once you are done, make sure you take a photograph of it and upload it to Artsonia.